Hi, buddy. Oh. <laughs> okay. This is Tiptoe, my 175 pound African sulcata. And today we, today we are gonna go over 10 things to think about before you get yourself a tiptoe. Before you get a tortoise, there are quite a few things that you kinda gotta, kinda gotta look over, kinda gotta see if you are ready for, because as you can see, he's a big boy, a very big responsibility. There is a lot that goes into owning an animal, and when you get them, they're very tiny and very cute, but they grow very quickly and very, very fast. So let's go over 10 things that should be thought about before getting one. The first thing to think about is life expectancy. Tiptoe is expected to live to be 80 to 120 years old. That's a pretty big timeline. That's a lot of mileage. That is, that's a big chunk. So a lot of people don't really think about that when they get a teeny tiny tortoise because it's, I mean, it's hard to think about an animal lasting, you know, longer than you potentially. So with that being said, it's important to have that knowledge prior to committing to an animal like this. Tortoises are actually one of the most rehomed animal, again, because people don't anticipate the, the commitment that comes along with it. So check that out, very, very important. Our second thing to think about is space and enclosure. Like I mentioned, when we got Tiptoe, he was about the size of a playing card. By the time he was seven, he was about a foot long and so on and so forth. So he grew very, very quickly, meaning that we had to change his enclosure with his size. So as he grew, I believe he had, he's had four or five houses. When we first got him, he lived in a little terrarium glass tank. And about three, four years later, my grandpa built him this massive enclosure that was like a little condo, two stories, that was still inside of our home. But obviously with a growing animal, he needed more space too. And at the, by the time he was about 10 years old, we had moved him outside because he was growing very quickly. Again, remember, when you move them outside, they might speed up their growing process too. So having space and additional space availability for them is very, very important. We have adapted our backyard to fit Tiptoe's needs, but even ba our backyard is, I mean, it's not huge. As you can see, Tiptoe is gonna be walking back and forth quite a bit because you kind of gotta go in circles here, hence why we take him out on walks and we make sure to get him additional exercise. But in a perfect world, we would have you know, a little bit more land for Tiptoe to roam around on. We kind of adjust for his needs on our daily schedule. We are very lucky to do so, but it's definitely something to think about that these animals aren't necessarily apartment animals. They're definitely, uh, they're big, big outdoor babies. Number three, cage furniture. So when Tiptoe was a teeny tiny lad in his glass enclosure, we had to make sure he had a couple of things in there that would you know work as his house we had a couple of different like rocks that he could climb on so there's like good enrichment for them when they're small it's great to have different i don't want to call them obstacles but different little things inside their cage that they can engage with to keep them you know keep brain moving body moving everything going well <laughs> Tiptoe's house when he was a baby he had a tissue box that we just cut the front off of and put some hay in it and it was very cute he loved it again he grew out of it very quickly, but definitely important to have and important to think about prior to getting an animal, like a tortoise. You wanna make sure you have their enclosure set up so when you get them, you can just flow right into that routine. A dish for water, Tiptoe has a dish for water, but typically we focus his hydration in his pool outside. So depending on the size of your tortoise, you may have to adapt and adjust as well. This is Tiptoe's current enclosure. He is coming to say hi, hey buddy. But we have a fence that is lined with an extra piece of wood, that way he can't see out, so he's less likely to climb. This is awesome for us, this works well. I mean, he's gonna climb anyways. What are we gonna do? He loves to turn right in front of it. We love that for you, Tiptoe. <laughs> he has a pool that we put in for him, that way he can soak and get hydrated, and then we have his house. His house is so cute. My grandpa built it 10, 10 years ago for him. And we have two heating lamps in there, a heating pad, and we had to put an additional, additional layer of wood in the back to help keep it insulated during the winter. But for right now, this works great for us. 
We are in the process of putting together plans to build him a new house. Process meaning our goal is to have this house completed in the next month or so. So we are definitely working on it, getting it done. But you know, we wanna make sure that we're hitting all of the bases. This brings me to our next thing to think about, which is the lighting and heating. Tiptoe is an African sulcata tortoise, so they are used to very, very warm temperatures. We keep Tiptoe's house heated to about 90 degrees all the time there's heat lamps going and his heating pad and we have a little thermometer in there to ensure that we are keeping his house at the correct temperature if they are not at the correct temperature you run the risk of them getting a respiratory infection or another related illness and you do not want that number five I love Tiptoe more than anything he is my baby but he is a time commitment he takes up quite a bit of time in our day when he was smaller and he lived inside, of course, it was less of a time commitment. We would feed him in the morning, check on him in the afternoon, play with him throughout the day. But now that he is has taken over the backyard, he does require quite a few more check-ins throughout the day. He is a man on the move and there are quite a few activities that we do each day to make sure that he stays his healthy and happiest self which include running him a spa in the morning. That means spending some time filling up his pool, making sure it's clean, cutting his grass for breakfast, putting together his nice greens for the day, his hay, making sure that the enclosure is swept up. All of these things are very little tasks, but obviously with time they do add up. Some days, not quite as frequently during the winter, but we like to take him out on a walk or out to the front lawn to get some grass, get some additional exercise. So when we do that, that's about an hour to two hours. So I would say on average, I spend about two to three hours with tiptoe per day. Obviously, not everybody is going to need this much time. Some people might need more. Some people, I'm sure, would take less time. Tiptoe is quite spoiled, so you gotta you gotta keep that in mind with this as well number six would be transportation that is something that you definitely need to think about maybe not when they're super small but as they grow you need to at least have an idea of how you would transport your tortoise in case an emer emergency or if your tortoise needs to go to a vet it is always a very good idea to have a plan in place so goes in an extra large dog crate it takes two to three people to lift him into his crate and then again another two to three people to then lift that crate into the car it's a group effort but i'm really happy that we have that system down we live in an area that has a lot of wildfires during certain seasons which we are in one of those seasons right now and a few years ago we did not have a way to transport tiptoe we we were out of luck and we had a fire that was coming in we were supposed to evacuate couldn't evacuate because we didn't know what we were gonna do. So we got very lucky that the fire obviously stopped before it hit our home. But very soon after that, we realized we should probably get it together, which we have. So tiptoe, extra large dog crate. And we can, we can make sure that he is safe when we are moving him. Number seven, before you get any animal, it's very important to know what kind of food they need. What is their diet? What what do we have on the menu? This is very important. So Tiptoe's diet is 75% grass and hay. That is, that's a very large percentage of his diet. He also gets veggies, he gets greens, he gets fruit on occasion. It is high in sugar, so we make sure to keep that at a minimum. But before getting any animal, it's very important to at least have a little laundry list of what's okay, what's not okay. You can do this by doing some research online. I know online there's a lot of times a lot of conflicting information and if that's the case you can reach out to your local exotic vet and hopefully they can provide you with a list of items that are good for your tortoise husbandry items there are some items that i would say are a maybe not a must-have but a very very highly recommended items for tortoises that you might not normally think of temperature thermometer something to check the humidity um, they make like a temperature gun as well, which you just like point and it tells you the temperature. That's awesome. It's a lot more useful than you think. And there are quite a few items. I'm going to blah, 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 some on the screen that are things that are just nice to have. And again, if you're getting an animal, it's always better to be over prepared rather than under prepared nine. 
It's important to have a vet in place before you get an animal, especially an exotic animal. There are a lot of places that don't have vets for exotic animals or where your closest exotic animal vet is gonna be 30 minutes away, 40 minutes away, maybe even two hours away. That's very important to consider as well because God forbid an emergency happens and you need to get your animal to them immediately and if that can't happen, we do not want to see that. So prior to getting something fun, a new animal, definitely good to check out your local vets, make some calls, see see what's out there. I know for a lot of vets nowadays, they have mobile vets that will literally come to your house. So that's awesome. But doing some research on that, I would definitely say is something important to, to do prior to committing to one of these lovely babies. And commitment, big word, right? That is our number 10. You really need to think about the commitment that comes along with owning an animal that lives for 80 to 120 years. Again, I'm sure that sounds like a crazy number, but it's it's 100% real. Like, you need to, to kind of have a plan in place. I know that my current plan maybe isn't ideal, but I'm hoping that when I have children, they will fall in love with Piptoe just as I did, and they will hence take on the, the task of caring for Tiptoe. Now, this might not be the case. My kids may, for whatever reason, not be the biggest fans of this love bug, whatever, but as time goes on and as I you know, get older and everything, I definitely am continuing to think about what Tiptoe's path is gonna be. I mean, he's tethered to me for my whole life. I have to consider him when I can think about where my next home is gonna be, where I'm gonna raise a family. Like All of that requires me to think about Tiptoe as well. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that this helps, you know, get some wheels turning it if you're thinking about getting a tortoise or if you already have a tortoise maybe this is something that is helpful for you to kind of go through and make sure some of those boxes are checked maybe some new ideas if you guys have any other additional things that you think would be helpful please leave them in the comments i know a lot of people who follow these videos have tortoises as well so the more information more tips and tricks the better that way we can all share all that stuff and give our shell babies the the happiest life that they could that they could have so thank you guys again so much for watching if you like this video please like and subscribe as it really supports our channel and